So go on to uh, move on then from soil health to biodiversity. And biodiversity, as a, you know, could be could be talking above ground, like or below ground, like we were just working. And um, this again, again, you can think of this in terms of a, a big picture, in terms of the global issue, and this is becoming a big global issue. Canada just signed on recently to a new UN convention or, or protocol on trying to redress or reverse the loss of species uh, in all uh, ecosystems, and it's going to be quite a challenge. It's going to become as big an issue as climate change if, uh, in the press, I think, over in the coming years, etc. How can we do this? And our agriculture has a, a big role here and, and could, can do a lot to, to contribute. Um, but also, I think, as I'll try and show, this is also can be a practical management tool in some ways uh, at all organic farms as well. So have there been any in studies? Have we actually gone out and looked at comparative conventional organic farms uh, in terms of um, vegetation flora, um, uh, plant species, or wildlife species? Well, there's been just a few studies. And I think there's a tremendous opportunity to do more of it. Uh, and this was a group of ecologists, actually, not agriculturalists, uh, Bhutan et al., just a couple of years ago. It, it's an excellent study, uh, if you get a chance to look at it. Um, excellent journal, really well-designed study, where they went out to uh, comparative 16 conventional and 14 organic farms in Ontario. And they really designed it well. We looked for farm fields that were very similar in size, uh, crops that were similar, so they weren't biasing towards you know, very different, look, different looking organic farms. They tried to pair up the farms uh, so that they were very similar in all other regards. <clears throat> and then they measured, uh, or counted and identified um, plant species in the hedgerows, along the fences, in the field margins, and in the field as well, and documented it, so, so a lot of work. But the, the take home point is that uh, the fields and the hedgerows and fence rows of organic farms consistently had many more native and exotic plant species. Now, I remember talking about this somewhere, and somebody said, Yes, no doubt we do. We have a lot of weeds on organic farms, and you know, is that all you're talking about? But, but the, the authors of the study pointed out uh, they were aware of that. They said, Really, if you looked at what we documented, it was along the fence rows, you know, species that you would find in forest ecosystems, native and, and, and exotic plant species, not all, these are not all weed species in the field, this is more marginal to the field uh, and, and, and species that uh, would thrive under the shade and the shrubs and the trees, so this is not just in-field weed species at all. And, and many of us see this on organic farms, and, and, uh, but it's, it's hard to quantify. So it's really nice to see a study like this. But of course, this has added benefits as well in terms of uh, habitat for natural predators and for pollinators. And studies in Europe have actually drawn a link between, between this added biodiversity of organic farms and support for pollinators. So there's a lot of concern about <coughs> declining pollinators. If you moved on, some of the same group of ecologists have looked at wildlife and bird species. Thanks. Um, looked at uh, bird species in paired farms. Again, a really well-designed study where, again, they looked, they made sure they had similar field size, crop sequence, all the rest, uh, in organic and conventional farms. And it's amazing how they did this. They counted, uh, set birds in 72 fields on 10 conventional, 10 organic farms. How do you do that? I, was I couldn't help but read the details. How would you go out measure? So what they were doing is they were out at 6 a.m. Uh, every morning, standing in the fence row, fence rows, facing, you know, measuring it, counting every bird for 200 meters that they could see in 180 degrees, uh, and then recording it, and, uh, and, and the type of bird species as well. But uh, I just think of all, you know, what the neighbors must think, these characters standing, facing, you know, probably going, those organic farms, what are they? Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, so the 68 birds, species richness just means the, uh, the, uh, the number of species, that there was a, a richer range of species of birds, and abundance is sort of the actual number and frequency, was significantly higher than the organic system. Why would that be? It was the same crops, similar crops, etc. And they, they were guessing at it, but they attributed it to just habitat. Again, the, the, some of that diversity in, in, in plant species, 
uh, seed resources, and the larger number of invertebrates, uh, ground beans, whatever it might be, were just, just more abundant on the organic farms. So it's that mixture uh, that made the, uh, the organic farms more attractive to the wood species. <laughs> Speaking of ground beetles, we've been, this is just one to flag that uh, one of the, my students work at uh, East East been working to see can we manage ground beetle diversity uh, in, in organic systems to, for pest control uh, reasons. He's, he's interested in an organic hybrid blueberry system. And the big pest there is blueberry maggot, uh, like apple maggot. Uh, not, not dissimilar, uh, has a phase of its life cycle in the ground, whereas a pupae and ground beetles, large enough ground beetles can, can eat, eat the pupae and so it will contribute to sort of classic biological control. So he's been looking at can we manage the, the, the ground floor and the type of mulches or the, the uh, vegetation, does that influence? Um, uh, it's a lot of work, and he's just showing there looking at a, a trap that he's using. Um, and he ends up with tables like this with loads of different species of ground beetles and, uh, and uh, rove beetles. And he's really an entomology background. Uh, I don't, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning all the time. Uh, and the nice thing about doing this kind of work too is, and any kind of research is the unexpected uh, happens. And uh, fortuitous uh, discoveries, and while he was at it, he uh, came across a new species of, of rove beetle which is a great credit to him for his work. Uh, it's not that large, that would be terrifying. It's actually, it's, act, it's actually so small you can't pin it to mount it. Uh, so the actual specimen he found is in the Natural History Museum in Halifax. And uh, they decided to name it after uh, Gluskat, the uh, mythological uh, figure of Micron, uh, the legend. Um, I'm not sure what the beetle taught him. So, but to, to go back to sort of what's the practical implications of that? That was one example of it, managing biodiversity. But here's a fantastic study that just came out this year in Nature of all journals, as about as prestigious as you get, um, looking at the, is, and they, they, they had the chance to do that kind of meta analysis, meaning they dug into the literature, they found as much as they could. They started with potato systems in Washington State, or again, conventional, but they were looking at is there a trend here in the literature? And they found there definitely is a trend that anything that's been published in nature, that you're finding much more species evens, which is another one of these terms ecologists use, to mean um, a, a more, less imbalance in the number of species. It's not skewed one way towards one dominant predator type. You're getting more of an even number of predators. And that was the consistent trend across the organic systems. So they actually took that evidence and then try to reproduce it in little, little sort of mini field settings and show that whether that would suppress a potato beetle, I think it was, and showed how it did to have a more even distribution of, of predator species. So they're talking about pathogens and nematodes and uh, not just ground beetles, all kinds of things. But uh, so it's, that's very exciting to see uh, more and more sort of ecologists really coming out of organic farming. 